Hey there, I'm not Dan, but in this video we're going to learn about nuclear decay. It's... When bitter nights are falling, can't find no sleep. Can't you see I'm falling? Oh no. Welcome back. Now before we get into nuclear decay, I think we need to do a quick refresher of the structure of the atom. So if you recall, there are positively charged protons and neutrally charged neutrons in the nucleus, and then there are the negatively charged electrons in the energy levels on the outside. And usually what happens is the positively charged protons and the negatively charged electrons are attracted to each other, and that's pretty much what holds the atom together. But what about the nucleus? In the nucleus, all you have are the positively charged protons and the neutrally charged neutrons. So it's not like there's a charge balance happening there that actually holds everything together. Well, the best that we can describe this is that there's this vague nuclear force that's holding it all together. Uh, but in order to really understand kind of what's going on with this, we need to take a look at a graph. So allow me to introduce the amazing picture-in-picture -picture window of science. And you can see right here, what we've got is a little graph that represents the stability of the atom. So everything, this blue line right here, this represents stable nuclei. And any time the ratio of protons to neutrons gets a little out of balance, whether it's above or below, as you can see here, things start to decay. So the important thing here is to keep that ratio of protons to neutrons within this very small, narrow, what we call band of stability. Otherwise, it will start to decay. And there are actually three different types of decay. As you can see here, we've got alpha, beta, and gamma. All right, so let's talk about what each of these are. Okay, so the symbol for the alpha particle well, it's the Greek letter alpha, which kind of looks like a fish, like this. Or, you can just use uh, HE, which is the symbol for helium, because the alpha particle is basically a helium nucleus, okay? The beta particle here is the Greek letter beta, which is a capital B with a little tail on it. Or, what you can do is you just use a lowercase e, because the beta particle is an electron. Now for uh, gamma rays, the Greek letter ga gamma is kind of like this little Y with a flourish on it. Or, if you're like me and you just want to be really simplistic about it, just put a Y. Okay? Alright, so let's talk about the structure of the three particles. So we've got the alpha particle, which as we said is a helium nucleus. It has a mass of four because it's comprised of two protons and two neutrons thus giving it an overall charge of plus two. The beta particle is an electron, so it has a mass of zero, relative mass as compared to the proton and neutron, and then its charge is negative one. Now, before we go any further, let's take a moment and stop and think about this. The beta particle, which is coming from a, nucle a nucleus, is an electron. Are there electrons in the nucleus? Well, as it turns out, there actually are. Because as you see, the neutron is a proton and an electron fused together. That's why it has a charge of zero. Because it's a positive charge and a negative charge together, balancing out to be a zero. So what happens in beta decay is that the electron from a neutron leaves the nucleus, leaving the proton behind. So the overall effect is that the uh, mass stays the same, but the atom actually gains a, nu uh, a proton, thus increasing the atomic number by one. It's pretty cool. Now, uh, gamma radiation, and notice how I say gamma radiation and not particle, because the other two, where the other two are actual particles, Gamma radiation is just energy. So as such, mass of zero and a charge of zero. So it's just energy leaving the, uh, the nucleus. Okay, for the ionizing ability here, 
So an alpha particle is the largest of all of the uh, radioactive particles here, and it has the largest charge, so it has, by comparison, the highest of the ionizing abilities, and so then that makes uh, the beta, the medium, and gamma low on the ionizing ability uh, scale. However, when it comes to the penetrating power, meaning the ability of this particle to pass through other matter, it's the exact opposite. The alpha particle is the largest particle, so it's gonna have the hardest time going through stuff, so that would be low. The beta particle, so once again, being in the middle, and let me tell you, it is extremely medium. Medium beyond belief. The, <laughs> the gamma particle here, I'm sorry, the gamma radiation, um, because it's just energy, it has a very high penetrating uh, ability, okay? So let me scroll on down here. All right, now here's, or so now we, we need to talk about what we need in order to protect ourselves from each of these uh, particles. So uh, alpha particles, being rather large, um, doesn't take much to stop them, okay? Just a, a piece of paper is all really all we need. Your clothes are able to stop alpha particles and actually even your skin can stop those particles. Um, see, we're actually being bombarded by alpha radiation pretty much every minute of every day, and it's not really that big a deal. So don't worry too much about alpha radiation. Uh, beta uh, radiation, on the other hand, requires something a little more, uh, uh, with a little more thickness to it. So as long as you have something that's at least as thick as aluminum foil, then you'll be fine. Now for gamma radiation though, it's kind of dangerous, kind of deadly, so we need something ridiculously thick, something like lead. You know, like every time you go to the, the dentist's office and take x-rays of your, your teeth, right, and they put on that lead vest and then they step outside of the room. Yeah, <laughs> so it's that lead right there that actually prevents the radiation from passing through into any of your other body cells, okay? All right, the speed. Now obviously this is relative speed here. We're not talking actual values here. The alpha particle being the largest is going to be slow. The beta particle, once again being in the middle, is medium. And then the gamma radiation is quite fast, right? Because it's not even a particle. Now the isotopic notation, now this is the important part because this is what we're going to use in the next lesson when we are writing nuclear decay equations. The isotopic notation for the alpha particle is HE for over two. The beta particle is E, zero over negative one. And the gamma radiation is the Y, zero over zero. And that's it. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any further questions, please be sure to comment below and I would love to get back to you. So that's about it. I'll see you in the next video. Remember, I'm not Dan and neither are you. Check you later.